Welcome to the Biotech Whisperer channel. Our topic today is on an introduction to bioterrorism. If you are new here, we are a group of retired professors sharing bite-sized videos. Let's continue with our topic. Biological weapons disseminate disease-causing organisms or toxins to harm or kill humans, animals or plants. Biological and toxin weapons are either microorganisms like virus, bacteria or fungi or toxic substances produced by living organisms that are produced and released deliberately to cause disease and death in humans, animals or plants. Biological weapons generally consist of two parts, a weaponized agent and a delivery mechanism. In addition to strategic or tactical military applications, biological weapons can be used for political assassinations, the infection of livestock or agricultural produce to cause food shortages and economic loss, the creation of environmental catastrophes, and the introduction of widespread illness, fear and mistrust among the public. Biological weapons form a subset of a larger class of weapons sometimes referred to as unconventional weapons or weapons of mass destruction, which also includes chemical, nuclear and radiological weapons. The use of biological agents is a serious concern, and the risk of using these agents in a terrorist attack is thought to be increasing in an increasingly geopolitical world with rising tensions. Biological agents like anthrax, botulinum toxin, and plague can pose a difficult public health challenge, causing large numbers of deaths in a short amount of time. Biological agents, which are capable of secondary transmission, can lead to epidemics. An attack involving a biological agent may mimic a natural event, which may complicate the public health assessment and response. In case of war and conflict, high threat pathogens laboratories can be targeted which might lead to serious public health consequences. In terms of delivery, it is important to understand the role of conversion or modification of the disease-causing organism to a weaponized agent. The agents can be enhanced from their natural state to make them more suitable for mass production, storage, and dissemination as weapons. In fact, almost any disease-causing organism such as bacteria, viruses, fungi, prions, or rickettsi, or toxin, poisons derived from animals, plants, or microorganisms, or similar substances produced synthetically, can be used in biological weapons. Examples include, but is not limited to aflatoxin, anthrax, smallpox, and tularemia, among others. Biological event is defined as the scenario where a suspicious disease event has or may occur with the possibility of upscale spread to the public and society. The response to a biological event, whether natural, accidental or deliberate, would involve the coordination of actors from many agencies who together possess the capability to determine the cause and attribute it to a specific source. Likewise, the preparedness for and prevention of such an event should also involve multi-sectoral coordination. International coordination is an important aspect in handling biological events, including adverse intentional bioterrorism. Because of the wide spectrum of potential biological hazards, efforts to manage the risks should be multidisciplinary, multi-sectoral, and above all, coordinated with international, regional, and non-governmental organizations and initiatives in order to address the interconnected nature of biological threats in a holistic manner. For instance, it is critical to build capacities across sectors to monitor disease not only strengthens the ability to detect and respond to a biological attack, but it also provides countries with the capacity to track and mitigate naturally occurring disease, thus vastly improving public health worldwide. Mitigation measures includes the strengthening public health surveillance and response activities, with an emphasis on a more effective national surveillance of outbreaks of illness, 
including alert and response systems, at all levels, that can detect diseases that may be deliberately caused. The COVID-19 pandemic and earlier episodes of SARS and MERS have improved our preparation for handling the psychosocial consequences of the deliberate use of pathogens to cause harm. This includes having contingency plans in place for an enhanced response capacity by all sectors. Taken together, the better communication between national, regional and global agencies will lead to improved assessments of vulnerability and effective communication about risks and threats to both professionals and the public.